The Romans had their chariots. Mexican cowboys, the charros, had their horses. The modern day charro is the lowrider. The modern day lowrider is to take a look at a car, boost them up, and showcase it throughout the neighborhood to say, hey, you know what? This is what we're all about. My biggest deal when I take out my car is I always roll down the windows because I want to make sure that I hear things when people come up. Most of the comments, believe it or not, come when you're at a stoplight. You get a lot of thumbs up, a lot of good job, a lot of, you know, it re reinforces the reason why, going back to that shuttle thing of displaying and, and, and showcasing what you're all about is to get on that road and enjoy your car, enjoy the music, and enjoy what other people say about it. I have a 1976 Chevy Caprice Classic. It's painted Dodger Blue. The car is unique. It has a great flake top on it that has a moonroof. It's uh, lifted all the way around. I have Dayton's on it. And the engine's all original. It has parts of the undercarriage that are chromed. When you open the trunk, it has a custom trunk that highlights the hydraulic system. The interior is all original blue from 1976. The original cloth material, the original carpet. It has a great sound system because you want to hear those sounds from back in the day. So you got to make sure you have good sounds as you cruise down the boulevard. I'm probably flying the Imperials Car Club plaque. My background with the Imperials Car Club dates back to 1969. Around the block from my home in East Los Angeles was the uh, president of the Imperials Car Club and his brothers were in the Imperial Club also, the Valadez family. I had a great mentor, Jesse Valadez, who was the owner of the Gypsy Rose. Being 12 years old, you come by and you start listening and you say, wow, I want to be part of that. The opportunity to clean some of the cars. Here, here's a towel, why don't you go clean the rinse for me? That was a, a highlight for me back in 1969. Having grown up in, in East Los Angeles from a uh, single parent, looking for that male role model, the, the mentorship that they provided around being responsible, being accountable. And for me, that's always been my model, have integrity, be a learner, and also be a model for everyone else. Those small things add up to, to big things later in life. I am so proud and humbled and honored to be the club president. Became president in January of this year. The mission of the Imperials Car Club is also to give back. One of the goals for me is to develop partnerships with our social agencies so that we could support the communities in whatever they need. During Christmas time, we have a Christmas car show where we collect toys. We distribute those toys to the uh, underprivileged families in our communities. Uh, this year, we're partnering with the Los Angeles Police Department, and we're gonna have a Christmas car show at the Police Academy. It's important that we do give back and that we do serve our communities so that low riding can be showcased in a positive way. I was born and raised in East Los Angeles. I was born at the General Hospital in Boyle Heights. I always ask my mother, where was I born? Oh, you were born at the hospital with movie stars. Grew up in East Los Angeles. My immediate family consists of one brother and two sisters. Was raised by a single parent, my mom. We were on welfare, but she made sure that whatever we did, she fed us. She made sure that we took our sack lunch to school every day, uh, made sure that we were properly clothed. My mom was a very strong person. She had a saying, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything that you can't do for yourself. And that always stayed with me. That always stayed with me because uh, those were hard times. Once we became older, in junior high, my mother said, you know what? This welfare thing is only temporary. So she ended up working for Seas Candy as a packer. Every morning at five o'clock in the morning, waiting for the senoras to pick her up, going to work. And I remember her calling me once in a while, Spanky, waking me up at 4 30 in the morning, 4 o'clock. My ride's not gonna come today. Can you please take me to work? So here I am, getting in my car, 4:30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Let's go, mom. You need to get to work on time. She ended up working for 35 years and retired from Seas Candy. And I remember. She taught me, whatever you did, 
is that you did it and you accomplished it and you always give back to the community, to your job, to your friends, that's important. Yeah, my mom was very special. Very special lady. And she's been gone for about, mm, about 14 years, but I still remember as of yesterday. All right, next subject. So everybody knew me in the neighborhood as Spanky. It was a great childhood. It was a great time of growing up. This is during the 60s. Attended public school, Rowan Avenue School, Stevenson Middle School, Stevenson Junior High. Growing up, anything that you wanted, you had to go out and get yourself. And so one of the first jobs that I had as a kid was a shoeshine boy. Shoe shining downtown LA doing Easter break or working at the corner store. Louis Market, right on the corner of 6th and Dittman in East Los Angeles. Those were things that helped me. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I just wanted a good job. I wanted a job where I could support my mom. I wanted a job where I could have the things that I didn't have when I was a child. At the high school we went to wasn't the best performing high school in Los Angeles. As a matter of fact, it was one of the worst performing high schools. And I remember just trying to survive high school. Ended up attending East Los Angeles College. I completed my AA, started working as a teacher assistant at Humphreys Avenue School in East Los Angeles. And I saw what the teachers were doing and I said, you know what, I can do that job. So right there and then, between East Los Angeles College and the university, I said I wanted to be a teacher. Ended up transferring over to Cal State Los Angeles. Got my Bachelor of Arts degree in Child Development. I started teaching. Got my Master's in Education Administration and became an assistant principal with the Los Angeles Unified School District. I was assistant principal for about four years. So working in education is like missionary work. You gotta give a lot, you gotta give a lot, you gotta do a lot. I got promoted to principal. The school where I was first assigned to was a low-performing school. So I ended up taking that school. We gained so many points in what they call the uh, Academic Performance Index, over 300 points, so that was unheard of. So then my superintendent comes up to me, and says, Eugene Hernandez, I have an opportunity for you. He says, we have a new school that's gonna be opening on First in Vermont, in East Hollywood. Would you are you interested? I said, sure. Frank Delomo Elementary School on First in Vermont. When I left that school seven years later, our Academic Performance Index was 848 unheard of. It's important that I establish a relational culture with the school community. Because as we all know, schools are the center of that neighborhood. And I used to tell my staff, kids and families come first. Why do kids and families come first? Because they're there 24 seven. So it's important to establish they come first at whatever we do. Having it open between Monday and Friday was one thing, but having it open on the weekend was another thing. Those kids that need it, the necessary skills that were falling behind in language arts and mathematics, we tailored programs for them where we offered differentiated instruction for those kids. The phone would ring once in a while, and, and, and of course, who's calling on a Sunday? Oh, this is Mrs. Garcia, Mr. Hernandez, we understand you're at the school. We're making some burritos for you, or there's some, we're outside the gate, and so we want to make sure that we feed you. Said, wow. So again, it goes back to that relationship, that culture of, of saying that, you know what, Whatever we do, we do it for our kids. Superintendent calls me up one day and he says, we want to hire you for district leadership. Currently, I'm um, the administrator of operations for Los Angeles Unified School District, local district central, which encompasses about 160 schools. Part of my job involves providing a safe school culture and climate for kids. Because if kids don't feel safe, they're not going to become high achieving and not going to be learners and many of our kids who live in underprivileged neighborhoods do come to school with many things that they see that you and I growing up never saw. I've seen a rise of kids coming to school with trauma, whether it's something that occurred in the neighborhood, whether it's a shooting, whether it's a, a family disconnect, you know, many of our kids are undocumented. And so having, you know, parents taken away uh, that plays a big part. So it's important that everybody at the school site becomes trauma-informed 
and that we know the stories of our kids that come to school. Many times we, we, uh, we're quick to say, hey, where's your pencil, where's your homework? But it goes back to that relational culture piece that if you don't know where these kids come from, if you don't know who they are, you know, setting them off by saying, hey, where's your homework? For them, they're worried about the parents that got deported the night before, or they're worried about uh, a brother that got shot, or they're worried about not knowing where the next meal is gonna come from, or they're getting evicted or living in the garage. So it's important that we're sensitive. But how do we establish those relationships with the kids that we educate? And once we get them feeling safe about themselves, guess what? The academic achievement's gonna go up because they know that they have adults that care for them. Kids are approachable, kids are reachable, students are reachable, and it's important that we start having those relationships with our kids. Many times when I visit high schools, I try to seek out those kids that are in the corner or hanging out, and then I'll walk over and I'll introduce myself, and many times, are you an ARC, are you police, what are you, the principal? So what I do is I usually whip out my phone and I show my car. Wow, mister, that's your car? I say, yeah. You have that icebreaker. For me, it's that low rider. So instead of pushing them out, we push them in and say, you know what, uh, it's important that you're here. We care about you. Things that I've learned well when I was in the car club as a young man, those things helped me become a better principal. Uh, it's about taking what you learned before to apply them to my job as principal and working with the families and working with the communities. I've been with the school district for 41 years now. People say you have a, a huge title, but it's still the Eugene Hernandez, it's still the same Spanx from East Los Angeles. My, my message is simple. You could be whoever you want to be. It all depends who you're going to follow, what you're going to do in life. Do the best you can hanging out with people who are gonna push your agenda, not keep you down. You don't have to be a product of what you are. It's always thinking about the future and what you wanna be. Don't look at me as a role model. Look at me as somebody who has made it, who's continuing to learn and working that hard at whatever they have. My name is Eugene Luis Hernandez. I'm an administrator of operations for the Los Angeles Unified School District, and I'm a low rider role model.